Hello and welcome to this video on time series forecasting, where we'll be taking a look at the ARCH model. Now, the ARCH model is used very often in finance and uh, econometrics, where we'll be forced to kind of measure the volatility because volatility plays a huge part in uh, markets, in fund values, and uh, in uh, tracking your stocks. So our typical idea of variance as we understand it in, in its uh, traditional sense, we talk about variance of uh, a given variable. And uh, this is almost a stagnant kind of a value, one that is given in terms of our squared differences from the means. So this is the what is known as the unconditional variance. And when we really look at variance that is changing as, as a function of time, and that's where the uh, use of this volatility comes into time series forecasting. When we talk about conditional variance, we are looking at sigma t squared, which is to say uh, the variance at time t as a function of certain independent events previously. We could say uh, it minus one, it minus two, uh, it as something that is generalized. So we are really looking to model this conditional variance, which is better known as volatility. And uh, if you take a look at the small chunk over here in our time series, we can see it. there is higher volatility over here. Certain periods will see a lower sense of volatility. So because of this, uh, typical continuous fragments of low volatility, or low volatility or higher ones, we tend to find ways to model it. And uh, that's where the conditional variance comes into play. So this would essentially be given by, when we look at the arch model, we're talking about giving this as a function of the past value, or rather the square of the past value, for that time series. And uh, looking at a more general case, we would end up really adding a lot many more values. It's not sufficient to use an order of one. You can think of this as the autoregressive model where we are having lots of coefficients and uh, previous, the past values is what we are looking at. So the model functions pretty well, even though we are using uh, past values and not really uh, past variance values. So either way, we are talking about stretching this uh, way back. We, we end up using, say, let's say about Q, Q values. Effectively, this would come to YT minus Q whole square. So rather than having access to these past values, we tend to have a more generalized version. This, of course, the arch model, um, Conditional variance is why we come to this conditionally term and heterostatic is what we mean by when we when we are talking about bringing in this idea of our variance depending on external factors, in this case, the past values or the past squared values. So here, when we look to come to terms with the fact that we won't quite have access to that many past values, we would like to rather use the generalized version of this arch model. So generalized arch becomes the arch model where we give the same squared variance or the squared volatility as a function of, we just go to order one, alpha one times uh, yt minus one square and we add a term to represent the predicted value or the forecast value at time t minus one squared once again. So this becomes a more generalized version. And uh, it, it so happens to be that a single order of this Gartz model is, is quite effective. It's as good as having the qth order when you look at the arch model. So that, in a sense, is how we model volatility in uh, in time series and use the arch or the gauche model as required.